right, today we're gonna do another strength session and we're gonna cover the back squat or basically kind of how I would do any squat session. We've done bench already, we've done some sumo deadlift. So we're gonna cover the squat today, including warm up, squat session, and then some accessory movements at the end. Uh, to start with the warm up, I like to do more of dynamic warm ups. I don't do a whole lot of static stretching. I know I kind of mentioned that before, but gonna take you through some movements that I do when I warm up for the squat that hit some of my tight spots, some spots that I think are super important uh, before you hit a heavy squat session. So let's do it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is start with 10 easy calories or 10 moderate calories on the assault bike. Uh, I like to do something to get the blood flowing just a little bit before I move into any kind of dynamic movement or any kind of movement at all. Uh, I like to try to sweat just a little bit. So we're gonna do 10 easy calories. We're gonna drop into six lunges going forward. So three each leg, six side lunges, six air squats with a three second pause in the bottom, and then some stretches there for only about 30 seconds at the end. So when I'm doing lunges, I'm thinking about keeping good technique of the lunge, tracking the knee out over the toe, keeping my chest tall. I'm gonna to touch that back leg to the floor. But one of the things I like when I lunge is it starts to kind of open up my hips a little bit and it puts emphasis on each leg individually. So if certain things kind of pop up on maybe my left side that wouldn't on my right, I can kind of identify it a little bit easier when I lunge. And uh, also it's a good way to kind of like fire up my glutes and my uh, posterior chain a little bit. For the squat session, I notice if I don't do something like a lunge, um, I'll be more quad dominant and more apt to just focus on using my quad to kind of stand up out of the bottom of the squat. So this is something that kind of wakes my entire leg up a little bit and uh, just kind of reminds me of what needs to happen as I start to approach the barbell and load some weight. The next movement I'm gonna do is the side lunge. Why, would I, why do I do the side lunge? Um, I like how it kind of forces my knee to track further forward and also uh, forced me to try to stay back on my heel. So what I'm doing there is getting a little bit of a dynamic motion where I'm actually warming up my ankle as much as I'm doing anything else and trying to get, let that fib tip track forward uh, how I kind of want it to when I squat. So it also helps warm up my hips, stretch the groin, all those good things um, that I'm gonna wanna do before I start throwing weight on my back. But just being able to reach down and try to get down as deep as I can forces my knee to come further forward than it would in a regular squat or in a forward lunge in this case. And I can already feel like the tension down in my ankle, a little bit in my Achilles. And I like to be able to sit down there and just warm up that movement that allows my shin to track farther forward, unloaded and in a situation where we're just warming up and just getting moving. So the last dynamic movement of this part of the warm up is just gonna be an air squat. Um, you're never too uh, good for the basics, right? So you should definitely be hitting some air squats before you hit a squat session. And one of the things I like to do is get my feet set up where I like them, which is right about shoulder width, toes slightly pointed out. I'm a pretty general squat stance guy that might be different between different people. Uh, my toes are typically turned a little more in than others, but I like to get right where I'm gonna get for the heavy sets and then drop down, focusing on driving my knees out over my toes, keeping my feet flat on the floor and my chest nice and tall. But when I'm down here, I'm gonna sit down here for about three seconds and just kind of do the same thing I was working in that side lunge where I can shift my weight back and forth a little bit up onto my toe. That's gonna to give me just that little bit of extra stretch and then stand. And when I stand, my last like six inches of standing, I'm really focusing on driving my hips forward and squeezing my butt like I did when I was standing up for those lunges. Okay, so I wanna emphasize some of those muscles I was trying to wake up before in my actual air squat pattern that I'm going to be doing with heavy weight. The next thing I'm gonna do is go through a couple static stretches and I'm only gonna hold these stretches for about 30 seconds. Before your lifts, you don't wanna hold a static stretch for an extended period of time. Uh, it has a little bit to do with reducing the ability for your muscle to contract if you really, really stretch a long time right before you lift heavy. So if you're gonna work out some soreness and that kind of thing, or you really wanna stretch, stretch the night before to prep for your squat session or deadlift session or your bench session. Stretch hard then and get good long stretches in so you can be good and loose the day of the workout. But then when you're actually gonna do the workout in the session, it's much more beneficial to again, work through those dynamic movements and only spend about 30 seconds on each leg or each movement with a static stretch. And so the couch stretch is one that I like. One, because I've got a super tight quad from having a quad injury two years ago. So I always need to loosen that up just a little bit more. Um, it also opens up my hips a little bit more. Again, the quad and actually, again, on my ankle, when it's put up against the wall like this with the toe pointed, it kind of loosens up some of my ankle joints. So all three of those places I like to hit with this stretch.
One of the forgotten things with like squatting, putting a barbell on your back, front rack position, overhead position, is your T-spine. I have a really bad uh, non-flexible T-spine, so getting some time on here where I can kind of open that up a little bit. I'm not necessarily foam rolling, but I'm just trying to push my ribs up towards the ceiling and kind of be able to lock in that uh, partial curve in your back, no, no matter where you're you know, back squatting, whether it's your lumbar curve or up at the top, that's usually where I'll cave on a front squat or a back squat. Uh, when I get fatigued, so my T-spine will kind of cave in a little bit and I'll get that round in my upper back. Um, so opening up here and being able to kind of open up my back a little bit does help me maintain a better position when I start loading the barbell. All right, in terms of uh, reps and percentages today, I'm gonna start with three sets of 10 at 40, 50, and 60% of the one rep max. And then we're gonna do threes from there, building up to around 90% with a uh, max set at 90%. So last week I was doing fives and I ended at 85% for a set of five and actually got eight. So that tells me that uh, some of the training that I did in the past cycle of squatting uh, has helped and has uh, probably improved my strength a little bit there. So we're gonna continue that rep scheme or we're gonna continue those max sets at those percentages and see if I can continue to kind of push through that plateau. So at 90%, I'd really wanna be looking at getting, you know, uh, six reps if I'm really looking to see that I've done a good job of increasing my strength. So uh, rather than just being able to get three, if I can kind of double that, then I'll know that I've been in a good spot just because that's what I've done in the past, right? I've been able to uh, hit six reps at 90% or my perceived 90% at the time. So I'm looking to do something similar to that today and uh, we'll see if we get there. the belt on for the last two sets usually when I get to 85% or greater I'm gonna toss a belt on um, that's just for safety precautions usually for training those kind of things uh, especially since I worked out again this morning so body might be a little bit fatigued and I'm gonna go for a max set so I'm gonna belt up uh, if I ever do if I'm feeling strong without the belt then I'll just keep it off but anytime I get 85 around 90 uh, it's typically a time that, that I'll throw the belt on finished at five reps at 365. Um, that's the most I've done at 365 in the past two or three months. Super stoked about it, especially since I hurt my calf. Uh, my one rep max right now is 405, which is way off like a lifetime PR, but um, for right now, I'm really happy about it based on last week's uh, 345 for eight, this week's 365 for five instead of three. Uh, I'm pretty pumped about that. The fifth rep, felt a little sticky um, in terms of my midline started to collapse a little. I could really feel my spine starting to roll over into this position despite having to, or despite trying to fight back the bar, fight back that motion of dropping down. Um, legs actually felt like they had pretty good speed out of the bottom, but again, just uh, some of the core and midline started to collapse a little. Sixth rep might've been there, but today decided to kind of err on the side of caution. Uh, did a pretty good workout this morning, um, some conditioning and that kind of things. So was a little more fatigued, so all the more stoked that I was able to get five reps at 365. For the accessory movements, I'm gonna focus on the lower body today. I like to focus on the lower body when I do uh, a lower body strength exercise, so I'm gonna keep my accessory movements the same. I'm not gonna touch the upper body for today. Give that area a rest. So I'm gonna do the back rack deficit lunge. Um, so you're gonna stand on two plates, with your feet in the split position, drop that back knee to the floor, keeping all the good mechanics in place as you drop that knee to the floor, and 
and then stand back up five reps on each leg so for a total of 10 reps. The second movement I'm gonna do is knee extensions and you can either do those banded or on the reverse hyper. I'm fortunate enough to have a reverse hyper in here. So I'm gonna do 30 reps on each leg, really just kind of burn out the quad. And then the next movement I'm gonna do is the GHD hip extension. So I'm gonna work again, some of my posterior chain in a way that doesn't load my spine, right? The back rack lunge still loads my spine up a little bit, uh, but heading over to the GHD, I can do some hip extensions, hold on to some weight, and I'm gonna go for sets of 15 there with as much weight as I can do, uh, maintaining the proper mechanics and maintaining the proper technique. I'm gonna do all those for a total of five rounds. So I'm gonna move kind of from movement to movement to movement, uh, take my time, it's not for time, it's gonna be more for quality, and then probably rest between 90 seconds and two minutes on the end of it. Hope you guys enjoyed the strength session. Put any questions you have down in the comments below. Remember to like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.